know what we're gonna do today. First, we gotta draw up some plans. Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today. Hey, Ferb, you got the blueprints? Excellent. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Phineas and Ferb episodes. Ah, Penny the Platypus, what a surprise! For this list, we're taking a look at the funniest, most heartfelt, and most epic episodes that have made this Disney Channel original series one of the best cartoons of the past decade. Hi, Meep. I'm Phineas, and this is Ferb. Keep in mind we've excluded Across the Second Dimension because that's technically a TV movie. This is gonna be the best day ever. We consider every day a plus to spend it with the platypus. Number 10, Traffic Cam Caper. <gasps> there it is! The elevator to the moon! Ha! Upon learning about a surveillance camera across the street, Candace obtains the evidence she needs to finally bust her brothers Phineas and Ferb. Can it be? Actual proof? Everything they've done over the summer? Oh, Perry, it's so beautiful! What she doesn't realize is that the camera has also captured Perry the Platypus's double life as a secret agent. I will remember this night always. Just think, on this very computer are the deliciously incriminating images from that CD I borrowed that will finally bust my brothers. A traffic cam caper ensues as Perry retrieves the camera's disc with help from Norm, and Candace tries to snatch it back with help from her ceaselessly considerate brothers. When at a crossroads, however, Candace realizes that blood is thicker than busting, thereby demonstrating this series' underlying theme of family. <sighs> but Candace, the disc, you didn't save it. What? And let you fall? Okay, Isabella, say ah. ah. Oh, good. The swelling has gone down dramatically. Number nine, I scream, you scream. Can you give me a hand unpacking this stuff, Candace? I'm not gonna help you, but as soon as I figure out what you're up to, I'm calling mom. Okay. Phineas and Ferb largely centers on two worlds that are constantly colliding without even knowing it. I'm here to pick up an order for Doofenshmirtz. Oh yes, your daddy just called. Hey, how's it going? I Scream, You Scream is one of the earliest examples of the show's ability to juggle different stories and brilliantly bring them together. It's evil, right? Oh yes, yes it is! It's nice to see you taking an interest in the family business. As Ferb first notices Vanessa Doofenshmirtz, Vanessa notices how oblivious her mother is to her dad's evil exploits. Teenagers. Oh, what are we making this week? She becomes determined to bust her father, while Candace tries to bust the boys, who are making a giant sundae. It amounts to a great payoff that will leave you screaming with laughter. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Ferb, snap out of it. What happened back there? I was weak. Number eight, The Chronicles of Meep and Meepless in Seattle. What's your name? Meep! This pair of episodes stars a wide-eyed alien known as Meep, who's as adorable as he is deadly. Phineas and Ferb have been abducted by an intergalactic criminal! Meep! Ingenious running gags carry over between both installments, involving a mustached baddie named Mitch, a balloon named, well, Balloony, and trailers for future adventures the creators have no intention of making. <laughs> Aren't you a little young to save the universe? Yes. Yes, I am. I want your hat on my desk. Oh, and for all the shippers out there, yes, these episodes confirm that Phineas thinks Isabella is incredibly cute, although he still doesn't fully comprehend his true feelings for her. It's a scientific fact. I had to put an 8,000 ohm resistor on the cute tracker just to keep you from burning it out. Now, can we please get a Meep Me in St. Louis already? It's Meep! Meep! What's wrong? Meep! Wow! Cool ship! Number seven, Phineas and Ferb's Quantum Boogaloo. Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today. Or I should say, I know what we're gonna do 20 years from today. This inventive episode offers a glimpse of what several characters will be like in 20 years, although our title character's fates remain somewhat clouded in mystery. Ooh. 
<gasps> Mom, you're so... Don't say it. You don't have to say that word. I mean it. Mom, you're so old. Reminiscent of Back to the Future Part 2, the gang travels forward in time where history is repeating itself. Phineas, we're from the future. Two alternative futures. One that's good. And one that's terrible. Someone should really fix that. We did! So the bad future no longer exists? Right. Well, if it doesn't exist, shouldn't the Candace from the bad future cease to exist too? Oh darn. When future Candace uses their time machine to alter the past, though, she finds that a world deprived of her brother's creative minds is a bleak existence. Phineas, I'm a fully grown woman and I didn't understand any of that. Just trust me! Come on! Full of unexpected turns, Quantum Boogaloo takes the audience by surprise with equally clever callbacks and foreshadowing. Thanks, guys. Have a good future. I like that kid. I like the kid standing next to him. Don't you get tired of this? What do you mean? Number six, Phineas and Ferb get busted. Doesn't it ever get, mm, I don't know, boring? Most Phineas and Ferb episodes follow a formula. I always come so close to busting Phineas and Ferb, but it ends up the same way every single time. I look and say there's a massive thing Phineas and Ferb built right in front of me, but every time you look, you always say, I see it. There it is, I see it. This one flips that formula upside down as Candace succeeds in busting her brothers and they're shipped off to reform school. Bye boys, see you at the end of summer. Yes, I actually busted Phineas and Ferb. <gasps> This is the happiest moment of my life! Granted, the final outcome is kind of a cop-out, resetting everything back to normal. As far as what-if episodes go, though, Phineas and Ferb Get Busted still offers some of the show's funniest dialogue, most moving character moments, and even a twist on top of another twist that provides some unexpected development for the Flynn Fletcher family's most silent member. Agent P, your cover's been blown. We're going to have to relocate. Uh, hey, Perry, what's wrong, boy? You sounded like you were having a bad dream. Number five, Roller Coaster the Musical. One of the best times we ever had was when we built that roller coaster. We should do it again, but this time as a musical. Where Phineas and Ferb typically works one or two infectiously catchy songs into each episode, Roller Coaster the Musical goes all out with the essence of a Broadway show. Going down, going down when I get mom to see This ridiculous monstrosity You'll never get away with this again In your T-O-I-N-G-D-O-W-N Remaking the pilot's events, this episode takes a familiar idea and gives it a fresh coat of paint with spontaneous singing. The playlist covers a variety of diverse musical styles from doo-wop to rock and roll. Then as a grand finale, we get a number choreographed by Kenny Ortega of High School Musical. What else can be said except carpe diem? And you don't have to build a roller coaster Just find your own way to make the most of these days of summer Number 4. Phineas and Ferb, Star Wars Episode 4A, May the Ferb Be With You Given all the other Star Wars parodies we've gotten over the years, you'd think there'd be nothing new for Phineas and Ferb to bring to the table. Hey, Luke. Phineas, Ferb. What's up, guys? Ferb? Check this out. Pod racing engines, how'd you hook these up? The Force turned out to be strong with this non-canon special, however, proving that both these franchises have plenty of life left in them. This is why I joined the Empire in the first place. I am so excited, I can hardly contain myself. I told you to go before the raid. That is not what I meant. Aside from its countless laughs, the episode also incorporates a lot of excitement and heart, being a well-constructed story above all else. How do you like that, Norm? My beautiful invention floating out here in space, and do you think I get any credit for it? Your invention, sir? Well, yeah, I designed it to be a nutcracker. Here, look, look at this. 
On top of that, it's notably the only time Phineas and Candace reference their biological father. Hey, wait a minute. Why is this guy hugging us? Oh, this is Ferb. He's our stepbrother. Mom remarried? What happened to Dad? A funny story, actually. He... Number three. Dude, we're getting the band back together. June 15th. It's your wedding anniversary! Oh, it got Wait, wait! I can fix this! In a refreshing change of pace, Phineas, Ferb, and Candace join forces to reunite the band Love Handle for their parents' anniversary. I never so much as held your mother's hand, but that night, I made my move. Well, don't just stand there, man. Kiss her! Meanwhile, Doofenshmirtz puts all his evil schemes on hold to throw his daughter a Sweet Sixteen party with unsuccessful results. Happy Sweet Sixteen birthday, my little oh, Vanessa! Oh, again! The episode naturally includes great jokes and memorable songs, most notably the Emmy-nominated I Ain't Got Rhythm. Ain't got rhythm. No, I ain't got rhythm. Said I ain't got rhythm. I ain't got rhythm. But it's the explosively touching final act that really distinguishes this particular outing, marking a significant turning point at which Phineas and Ferb went from being a funny cartoon to something truly special. Prepare for live feed to screen and wipe the source. I put up barriers to shield my emotions, a wall that you could never break apart. Number two. Phineas and Ferb, Mission Marvel. That's it for you, creeps. Ooh, ooh, can I web them up? After Disney bought Marvel, we all had one looming question on our minds. What do I do? I just stick out my hand, right? When are Phineas and Ferb gonna do a crossover with the Avengers? Not them. Okay, this is actually a pretty bizarre combination. Wait, that's not nice. I, I thought we were buds. We were amigos. We had, we had a song and everything. Then again, Phineas and Ferb is kind of a random assortment of ideas that oddly work together. The same can be said about Mission Marvel. Being a hero isn't the armor you wear, but the metal in your spirit and the steel in your resolve. Man, that was eloquent. The endlessly witty script both pokes fun at superheroes quack, quack, takimomo -san, superhero desu, while also lovingly paying homage to them. Complete with smart jokes, well-choreographed action, and a Stan Lee cameo to boot. The usual? Yep, yeah, same old, same old. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. A pest. Halloween's a horror, but I guess I must confess that I really don't hate Christmas. Three. <laughs> Two and a half. Two and a quarter. Is that it? Is that it? you're not going to do anything? You're just going to stand there like a dead fish? I'm giving you a chance to do something here. So it is warning! Bring it on, Speckies. We're going to go all Hyborian age on you. Number one. Phineas and Ferb, summer belongs to you. Today is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, and Ferb and I are gonna make it even longer. So you built the Statue of Liberty? No. Oh wow, that is weird. Behold, the amazing Sunbeater 3000. Summer Belongs to You finds Phineas and Ferb taking on their greatest endeavor ever in a one day trip around the world. What is going on here? We're flying around the world to make the longest, funnest day of summer ever. Every character is given a moment to shine. The songs are instant classics, and the story's intense stakes will leave you at the edge of your seat. We didn't calculate for the weight of an extra body. Will this affect our arrival in Paris? Hmm, let me let you know in about two seconds. Candace? Yeah? It is going to affect our arrival in Paris. The reason this stands out as Phineas and Ferb's finest hour, however, is because of how wonderfully it epitomizes the show's moral of never letting summer go to waste. Whatever you want to do, you make the rules. You got the tool to see it through. Somewhere belongs to you. It's a unique lesson for kids, not to mention a meaningful one. Oh, Do you agree with our list? Yeah, I hated cleaning that thing anyway. What 
What's your favorite Phineas and Ferb episode? I have an ouchie in here. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. For your biggest fans. Thanks, man.